Hey guys, another great edition of Quarantine with Coaches. Today we go out west. I got linebackers coach at the University of Wyoming, Coach Aaron Bull. How are we doing, Coach? We're doing great. How about you? Doing, doing good. Now I, I, I was told that you got a youngster at home, so we're doing this for for the pe- people watching. We're doing this uh, early for me, right? Seven o'clock, but probably like mid morning for you at this point, right? Yeah, it's, it's once you get on that, that toddler schedule. Got a 10-month-old at home. That's not her handwriting back there. That's my <laughs> wife, but that's her name. Uh, um, yeah, I got a 10-month-old at home, so the sleep schedule gets a little different. Awesome. Hey, can you talk a little bit about uh, your background in coaching thus far? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> so my dad's our head coach here. Uh, so I kind of grew up around coaching my whole life. Um, you know, just going to fall camp, stuff like that. And then uh, I came here actually as a um, – you know, I graduated in 2016, came here as a GA, and then, uh, you know, spent two and a half years as a GA in the middle of last year, got moved to linebacker coach, um, middle of the season. Luckily, I had some two really veteran seniors that were awesome, good and rolled the flow and everything like that, and it was a pretty smooth transition for as smooth as it could be. And then, uh, luckily, at the end of the year, I ended up getting uh, promoted full-time. So this is my first. Uh, this will be my first full season coming up on the job. Awesome. What kind of impact is growing up as a, as a coach's son had on you? You know, it's caused. Um, <laughs> you see a lot of different sides of this profession, uh, and you know, there's um, there was a time I'll tell people that when I was growing up, I was hesitant. I didn't want to be a coach. I want to be everything but a coach because um, I saw how much of a toll it can take on your family sometimes. And I was like, I don't want that. And then, you know, you just kind of meet more people. You see how stuff grows. You see the good parts of coaching. And it gives you a whole perspective, I always thought, on the sense of, like, outside of just, like, the Saturdays and the football aspect. But, like, what it's like to have the players over at your house when you're 10 years old and whatnot. And you get to know the guys on the team, even though you're the annoying one bugging them the entire time. And, um Obviously, it's a different feel on game day, regardless of where you're at, whenever it's your dad out there uh, or your family member out there, you know, coaching. Um, you get a little more defensive every time there's a bad call. But uh, – and then, you know, like I said, I think it's really shaped a holistic approach as I got into this. Or I'll tell you what, whenever um, – my wife, whenever I was dating her in college and I wanted to be a coach, uh, my mom was grilling her on the expectations of being a coach's wife um, in the sense that she's like, hey, you know what you're getting into. I'm making sure she knows what she signed up for too. And uh, so, you know, I think it was an awesome experience. Um, really gave me a holistic idea of what I wanted to do and uh, kind of always been had my hand in coaching or been around coaching the whole time. And you just mentioned that you, uh, you you were named full time linebackers coach in, in January. Have you how have you gone about building rapport in that room, even am- amongst you know the, the the quarantine? Yeah, you know, um, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, you know, the nice part about being around here is you get to know those guys pretty well, even though it's a different role. Um, you know, so I'd like to think I have some of their trust built up. You know, something I told the guys is. You know, hey, I don't, I don't expect you guys to trust me right away. I have to earn that through everything with you guys. Um, I expect you guys to respect me, you know. And, you know, something we did this year just trying to – during this quarantine, I thought was kind of a fun – a cool idea someone brought up to me. Uh, it was a spotlight drill, which I've always been hesitant to do because guys hate giving each other's compliments in person. Um, so, with on Zoom, I was like, all right, this will be a little bit – easier and during our zoom meetings but what it was was each person during the we did six weeks and each person everyone in the group had to go around and say something they appreciated about each one of those guys um and we went through the six weeks and that was kind of a cool little drill we did that i think a lot of the guys said that it made them realize how much they mean to the team even though they're not in that star role um and just kind of building up the guys the idea of hey you know, even though you're fresh and your time's going to come, you know, it just keeps sticking it out, keep fighting through everything, you know, see the whole big picture at hand. What advice would you give to a young coach who wants to try to emulate your career? Um, you know, I would say treat everyone right and work your butt off. Um, you know, everyone 
in this profession at some point has an opportunity to get a lucky break, I've heard, and uh, you just have to be ready to take it. And a lot of that stuff doesn't come from, you know, what you did during the time you're really interviewing, you know, quote unquote, but what you did during those three years before that, or, you know, just like, sometimes it's hard to get a job when you're walking for an interview, you know, it's the real way you get a job is um, how you've been acting the past two years around other people, you know, and because coaching is such a unique profession sometimes, you know, I think some people get frustrated that they're like, oh, you have to have, you have to have so many ties and stuff like that. Well, coaching is such a unique profession, I think, because, hey, if in the business world, if someone makes a poor hire, well, they can let them go and their business will be okay next year, you know. In the coaching world, if you make a poor hire, your entire staff might be gone. Um, so you really have to make sure you know who you're hiring. And that's why who you are as a person is just the most important thing through all of this. Um, if you're a good person and work hard, you can, you can learn a lot of stuff in this profession, even if it's not in your natural skill set. Hey, we'll do a little rapid fire before I let you go. You good with that? Awesome. Sounds good. Hey, what's the book that's had the biggest impact on you? Oh, uh, well, I'll say the Bible. I and mean, then the second one is um, uh, John Maxwell's Interfutable Laws of Leadership. Um, that was a great one growing up. What's the uh, show you've been binge watching most during quarantine? The Office. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched I what happened this morning. <laughs> uh, what's been your go-to quarantine meal? Uh, burgers on the grill. That's my wife and I have been doing. Nice. And then lastly, what's the best thing to do in the state of Wyoming? Hike. You know, beautiful mountains around here, a lot of outdoor space, not a lot of people. It's It's great. Awesome. Coach, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on Quarantine with Coaches. Yeah, well, thank you for the time.